Uh, the only information I had was the description they gave during one of the conference calls and then uh, also what information was in the test plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not have any any preconceived notion about what it was. Really didn't, didn't understand how it worked actually until I got here. Uh, I, I knew a gentleman that had some experience, he said from the early 2000s, possibly late 90s. Um, he said he was, it was good, it was kind of interesting. Read the test plan and just assumed, uh, kind of really wasn't sure what to expect from there, so. Really, I, the, only, I, the only thing I had heard was other guys talk about what TSAS was, the Tactile Situation Awareness System, but I've never worn one similar to it, so it was all hearsay, hey, it's something you wear on your belt, your stomach to help you feel movement, and that was really the only exposure I had to it. I was expecting a vibrating belt, which effectively it was, um, with a rudimentary implementation uh, to, to denote drift, which effectively is, is what it was. I'd heard of the program before, so I wanted to actually get a, get a shot at it. My boss had flown it last. Some high-level comments for me, but he didn't want to taint my opinion of it too much. He said he wanted me to make sure I was able to get on as one of the pilots to fly it so we could discuss it as we move forward with the overall uh, DVE program uh, in the AMR deck. Well, I've got, I've, got two, I've got two guys that work for me that have been up here. Mike Wise and Joe Fay both work for me. Um, and knowing that I was going to be one of the other evaluation pilots, we, we had minimal contact about it. Um, you know, but I tried to stay unbiased coming up here, so I didn't, I didn't get a lot of, I didn't seek a lot of feedback on what their opinions were prior to getting here to stay unbiased. But I knew what the design was, that it was a belt that gave you haptic cueing. And uh, I didn't know quite initially what, uh, you know, its capabilities were going to be, how it was going to be implemented. Um, you know, I, I didn't know if it was going to have various modes or if it was going to be, you know, one, one constant mode through all modes of flight. Um, I, I didn't understand how the transitions were going to work, but, I mean, I was familiar with the, the overall design of a, you know, a haptic cueing belt to give you drift. Two traffic research, six nines on the go, right close traffic. We're going to depart to the north with a train flight traffic pattern. RT2. Clear, left and right. Alright, on the go. Is that right? Clear. Alright, I'm just generally sitting in an attitude, looking outside visually at my power in. It's pretty, there's a discharge turn. Turn and lift. Alright, and I'm gonna stop at 60 and 200 feet. Yeah, yeah, the controls. Uh, controls, you do. I do. Hey, the workload rate? Uh, it was a low. No other comments? No other comments. Alright, uh, did, did you perceive any lateral drift? I did not perceive any. You got the small bird at the Thank level. you. Yeah, I do actually have two of them, sure enough. Okay, Thank yeah, there are two. I did not perceive any. Uh, my primary scan was visually out the front for any lateral drift. And oh, so experience I had today for, was, uh, uh, first it was a day flight, uh, great visual references, right? Perfectly clear day. Uh, second flight was a two hour night flight, so reduced visual uh, acuity, uh, and visual references. Uh, it took a while to get used to, uh, not only because it drew my attention to what was going on in my stomach. Uh, the longer I was got to use the equipment, the more I got accustomed to it, I think, and I got to where I was making inputs, uh, maybe a little bit subconsciously. Uh, I still knew I was getting tactor hits, but a little, as the experience level increased, my subconscious inputs of controls uh, increased as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, I continued to fly it and I got accustomed to it. The day flight, I, uh, I know we weren't doing a performance test, we kind of discussed that in the beginning. Um, I, I feel like as far as like position maintenance, altitude maintenance, um, it did increase my performance in, in addition to the, I think the main objective was to um, the increase in situational awareness. I think at the end of the day flight it was traffic out the left at a hover in the LZ and, and I did find myself looking over and realized that I was in a pretty good, you know, aft slide and the crew chief was looking out the left too. Everybody was looking left and we were sliding aft in, in the LZ. So um, situational awareness wise, I, I think it definitely increased that. Uh, overall, I thought it was, uh, I enjoyed it. I think the socialization uh, on Monday that I did in the simulator was, was really kind of necessary. 
because uh, throughout that four hour period I noticed a lot of improvement in my ability to react and interpret the signals. And then today I also noticed that I was reacting to them a little more quickly uh, towards the end of the flight even than I was at the beginning. But I thought overall it was a very good, I think it's a very good piece of a system, very, very good for certain tasks, but especially for the hover maintenance task, I think that's one where it really you know, earned its keep per se. I also felt that during the, the day afternoon tasks, didn't really need it as much. I was flying a you know, 14,000 pound Blackhawk you know, with good contrast on a beautiful day. It's, it didn't hurt at all and didn't seem to really help that much because I had really strong visual cues, uh, except for possibly in the OG hover maintenance task where some of those cues and, and drift weren't quite as uh, visually uh, detectable. But at night, I definitely think that there was a much more uh, valid need for that additional cueing, especially when we were out of the low contrast areas because there really wasn't much to cue off of. So those uh, TSAS cues became much more critical in the, the little bit of a DVE environment where I didn't have as good usable cues. I did it once tonight, which kind of shocked me. I, I got um, I don't even know if it's possible, like, uh, fixated on waiting for the, I almost stopped scanning during a hover and just found myself waiting for the tactor to tell me what was going on. Instead of looking and using the tactor, I kind of just stopped looking and just was just sitting there, okay, and I put an input in and just, just daydreaming almost, just waiting for the tactor to tell me, so. For three days now, I've experienced the belt. Um, you know, once in the simulator and twice in the aircraft now, four times in the aircraft total if you count the two that I was in the back seat. Um, and, uh, you know, my overall comment would be that in its current configuration, I would take it as it is, as a fielded piece of equipment, over nothing at all. Um, we will probably, you know, as, as the program moves on, we will probably look at incorporating various modes in it. We will probably look at the you know the tolerances. Are, you know, right now the lateral drift starts. You know, at a, at one hertz for you know anything up to between 0.75 knots and five knots, and then it goes to two hertz above that. We will probably you know look at you know what those correct numbers are. But even in the configuration and the settings that it has right now, I would take it as a field piece of equipment.